Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at Creo Parametric 7.0 using the family tables. And so with this, what's neat about Creo is that you have the ability to make changes and have it update automatically. But what if you had like thousands or hundreds or even just a few parts that you wanted to have updated using like an Excel spreadsheet, something like that, to where you could actually input some numbers that you'd want to change. Example being, here we have uh, what was exercise three from the intro class. Uh, what we're going to do, let's say we wanted to be able to go in here, and like right now we could go in, we could change this to, let's say we wanted a short version of this handle, we change it to two, you see it updates. But what if we still wanted this, the other version, you know, things like that. We could actually make modifications using the family table. So that's our goal without having to change all these dimensions all the time to be able to make that update. Now what you have to be careful of though, like um, we're going to use these actual dimensions that you see here in a table that's very similar to what Excel is. And you could actually use Excel too. Um, and we'll enter these numbers in and then see what happens. There is a verification tool in there that will check it for us automatically. But you might want to do some checks up front. Like for example, this say we want a short handle that's going to be two inches like we just saw there. And we also want one that has a short neck. So instead of 3.75, oops, um, make a change here. So let me change that datum. And let's say we wanted it to be 2 inches. Hit enter. And see, there we have a problem. It doesn't connect anymore. In fact, if you have an older version of Creo, you would get an error message right now, typically, because this version of version 7 actually enables you to have multiple body supports. See, there's two separate bodies there. Earlier versions, it would error out. Couldn't do that. So it's kind of a neat enhancement they've added. But let's go back to 4 there. So it's a modeling issue, the way it was uh, assembled. And this is design intent. And we talked about this from day one in short little bursts. Let's see how we could fix this. So we're going to first fix this, and then we're going to go ahead and drop it in the family table. So that um, handle there, click on the extrude 6, and go ahead and edit the definition. Uh, actually, hit the little arrow to the left of it, find the sketch, and edit that. Now over here we see there's a dimension, 3.75. Let's see if we could click on that and delete that. Okay, it's a weak dimension. But now we have to reference to this left edge. So if we go to the dimension tool, you'll see if you click on this edge, that's fine. And let's have it reference to this edge, and then middle click. And there we can actually see, um, we can put in a dimension. Hit enter. So now this will be controlled and dragged along by the length of this rod. So hit OK. Now if that happens to you, uh, or if it, I should say if it if it unsuccessfully gives, or gives you a message that it can't do it, sometimes you have to delete the entire handle in this case. I mean, you could keep the other features and just redraw it and then re-add it because sometimes it's an, I've gotten messages before where it says it's not able to an, handle or add uh, additional features like that. Okay, especially if there's dependencies. In this case, the dependencies were all blown away, so it's fine. Now, in theory, if we change that, so we find datum 1, and edit the dimension there. Let's change it to two and see if this works. And it worked. Success. Change it back. All right, now we could go to Tools, Family Table. And over here, we're gonna go right over here to the Insert New Instance, one, two, three, four. Now the, the last instance is gonna be the short neck, underscore neck. So type that in. Oh, forgot the S. All right, in the instance two down here, go ahead and click on that and drag over it. And let's change it to E3 short underscore handle. And now this first instance will be the machined version. And this will be pre underscore machine. All right, what does all that mean? Let's go ahead now and click on add delete table columns. 
Now, first of all, the dimensions. There's only two dimensions we're really interested in changing here. So, for example, the for the short handle, just double click on that four, or just click one time on it, and that's going to be D54. Also, this dimension here, if you don't see it, click on datum one, and it should appear. Double click on it, and that four inch dimension will be D25, and that actually will control the neck. Now, over here we have under add items. Let's go to features. Now. The features here are going to either appear or disappear. So this is all what it would look like after it's gone through machining processes. Okay, it's first molded. This is all a solid block of material. Then it goes, a, a drill goes in here and reamers, or mill, I should say end mill, gets milled out, and then reamers go in to smooth it for the gearbox and such and the recess. All right, so that being said, for the feature, if we just select the very top level feature, this recess, Everything below it will be suppressed with it, because essentially you're selecting what you want to suppress. Here, go ahead and hit OK. And now you can see we have some information that propagated. Now it's starting to look at, like an Excel spreadsheet. And you actually do have the ability to edit, edit it using Excel. But we're not going to use it here. We're going to use their own here. So the pre-machine, it's going to stay the same size, 4 inches for the handle, 4 inches for the neck. Uh, the short handle, though, um, this is where we're going to go ahead and change this. That was um, this one here, and that was uh, D54. So we want that to be 2 inches. And then over here, we're going to go ahead, uh, the next one down below, the short neck. This will be 2. Now, let's click over here. So pre-machined is going to be 4 inches. There's no change there. Post-machined, 4. The short handle now, this will be... Um, to make, uh, actually, we'll keep that at four. The short handle will be actually four. Now the short neck will be will be two. And we could keep the short neck and the short handle handle the same, or we could make a new instance if we wanted to that separates them or combines them. We're going to combine them for the very short neck. So technically, the short neck will be short neck and handle. So. I'll actually put that in there. All right, now we could verify. Now this is what I was telling you about to see if it errors out. You could hit verify. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not it. Uh, right here. And see, it's unverified. When you hit verified, it will actually tell you if there's any errors that occur. So it's really pretty neat. Imagine if you had a thousand parts, you you would have to go through and check check them individually. Not here. This checks them. Very neat little feature. Okay. Now, um, so with that being said, I forgot to put in the features here. So the pre-machine um, is going to be no. And here you could actually see yes or no. Now the, um, the machine will be yes. Short handle yes. And the short neck will be yes. So that means that cutout here will be there. Only in pre-machine, like it's right out of the mold, is it going to disappear. So you can basically suppress or unsuppress features. Never delete a feature. Always use this tool. Now we can verify again. Success. All right, let's hit OK. Now, how does this work? Well, first of all, let's go to File. And we're going to do a Save As a Copy. And we'll go ahead and call this the new file name E16 because it's no longer E3 and we'll drop it on the desktop. Hit OK and OK. Alright so now that we have that now what you could do you could go to open and you can see now there's all the variations in the E16 folder so if you go to the E3 short handle open that up and there it is. Let's go to open the E3 short handle and neck. There it is. Go to open. And now let's go ahead and select the machine version. Or I'm sorry, pre-machine version. Because remember, right now we have all those pockets in there. When we hit OK, those should be gone. And there it is. So in a nutshell, you can basically see how you can take a part in this exercise and modify it. Now what we're going to do next is we're actually going to look at um, 
at the, in the next exercise, we'll actually look at building a part from scratch with using this tool. And it's going to be a very simple part, not this complex. But um, that concludes this exercise.